we will be sharing this recording uh, very soon. This meeting everybody. is being recorded. So once again, thank you so much for joining us for the September 2022 virtual roundtable discussion on repositioning the African brand through sports. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Mogaji. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to have uh, some interesting speakers here with us today. They have volunteered their time and really appreciate their, their effort. I start by acknowledging uh, Cynthia Mumbo, uh, who is the founder and CEO of Sports Connect in Africa, uh, Mukamba uh, Yvonne Namir of the African Schools Program Manager of CAF, and also Sheba Narunja, the CEO of Alive and Kicking in Kenya, and also Yemi uh, Omojiba, the founder of Athletics Media, and uh, Manuela Picarello, uh, the lecturer and senior uh, and program leader of sports, uh, BSc Sports Management uh, from Beaumont University in the UK, and also uh, Brian Wessela, the founder and project leader uh, of the Football Foundation for, for Africa. Thank you so much for, for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you. So just to give you an overview of today's uh, roundtable, firstly, I will invite the panels to the panel members to have about five minutes to just tell us their own uh, perception or their own experience or their own perspective about uh, this topic, repositioning African brands through sport. Again, this is just more like a conversation with them, more like their own thoughts. So this is not a scripted version, but perhaps it's just left for them to, to take the floor and to share some insights. So that's going for five minutes for each of the speaker. And then after that section, uh, they'll be followed up with questions specifically for each of the speakers. I have, I have prepared some questions that I'll be asking the speakers with regards to, to repositioning Africa brand through sports. Then the third part will be opening this question, opening the floor for questions from the audience. We've got about 20 minutes for that. Perhaps if there's something you think we've not discussed that you would like to ask the panelists, this will be your time to, to ask. And then there'll be a closing remark from each of the speakers. This is a part I often like in our roundtable discussion, whereby the speaker will speak to one stakeholder, perhaps speaking to media owners. What do you expect media owners to do? Just something brief, something short, something practical that perhaps somebody listening will, will be able to, to act on it. Then I'll be closing up with a, a closing remark. So without much uh, delay, uh, let me introduce you to Cynthia uh, Mumbo. I'm sure she's here. I think I've seen her. Cynthia. Yes, I am. <coughs> yes. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you around. Uh, I'm sure you've, you've come to really share your insights with us. So please, in the next five minutes, just share your thoughts with us around uh, Reposition African Brand Trust Plus. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. My name is Cynthia Mumbo. I'm the founder and CEO of Sports Connect Africa. We are um, a consultancy that uh, focuses on um, delivering value to sports stakeholders across, across uh, the continent. And we specialize on the commercial conversation, uh, sports operations, and um, really sports business, sports development. So this is an interesting topic. And, uh, you know, when you when you initially reached out and said, hey, we want to talk about repositioning Africa. Um, I'll go back to the first thing you started, Africa is not a country. Uh, so this is a very uh, easy and hard question to answer because when you say repositioning Africa, is it Africa the continent itself or is it Africa the countries? And that there's always uh, you know, an, an in-between there. But um, you know, generally, you know, what's a, what's a brand, you know, what, what is a brand? And for me, a brand is a promise. Uh, and so what is the promise that Africa is giving to, you know, the, the, the different stakeholders who are interested in the brand that is Africa or what, you know, sports works um, for Africa. So, you know, I, um, I sat down, I thought about this and I, we're, we're seeing a transition or an interest in the area of sports can see what CAF is doing. I'm glad to see my friend Yvonne Nama is here and to see um, my friend uh, Brian Wesala, both from my country are here doing great stuff. 
across the across the continent. Um, you can see what Yvonne is doing at CAF, and you know generally what CAF is doing with repositioning football. So the investments that you know the conversation around the investments behind football. Um, we can see what the NBA is doing. The NBA has been here around 11 years now. We can see what the NBA is doing with um, uh, the Basketball Africa League and the Junior NBA and all the you know different uh, experiences. Um, but then when we talk about Brand Africa, who who exactly is who who cares about Brand Africa? You know who cares? Who who is who is this target market? You know is it is it the fans? Is it um, the everyday guy? Is it investors? Is is it, is it uh, you know, the different stakeholders within sports? Who, who cares about Brand Africa and how then do we start thinking, okay, we now know that there's this conversation uh, and there are these people who are interested, then how then do we position ourselves and how do we position this brand or how do we position the different countries within Africa using sports to deliver value to these uh, different stakeholders? So I think I'll, I'll leave it there because there's, there's really so much to say. Um, I'll give it to the next speakers and then we can delve in uh, more as, as, we, as we continue. Thank, thank you so much for, uh, for that, Cynthia. You started with my own comment. I mean, I will also continue with your comment. I think that's a question we need to answer. Who cares about the African brand? Yes. Now, I, I think you've put me on the spot and that's something we cannot go on about. As an individual, as a, as a person, Emmanuel, I care about the African brand, but I guess my concern is how much care can my care really do? I guess can can an individual's care, can our own oh desire to make this African brand, can it really be so can it really is it really worth it? And mm -hmm. again reflecting perhaps I would say our political leaders, but do they really care? How about the brands again? So I think that how about the brands in Africa? Do they really care about where their brands are situated? Or how about our federations and our, our governing bodies? So I think that's something to take home uh, for us to always reflect on it. If, you are, if they're asking you position, reposition the African brand, perhaps the question is who cares? Like, yes, why should we be bothered uh, about this? Thank you so much for, for that. And I think allow me to also follow up with Yvonne, Yvonne, I think she's here as well, to share her own thoughts about reposition an African brand, perhaps from from CAF, from London Express, from what you are doing. In just a few minutes, what's your thoughts, please? Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Um, and it's so nice to see some familiar faces uh, in Cynthia and Brian. So yes, it's always a bit, uh, it's always very nice to actually be in the same um, conversations about the same things mm -hmm. that we have been working on in the past uh, decade. Um, human existence is marred by diversity, so much so that every other decade or less, the vocabulary in the language dictionaries are added to reflect new definitions of new things which have a significant commonality. The African continent, arguably more than any other continent, is rich in diverse cultural practices, cuisines and languages. Um, having worked in and with more than half of the countries in the African continent, uh, the language of sports still holds a close second to politics, actually, across many African nations, meaning that most of the conversations that I get into to familiarize with the people that I work with always make reference to the political state of the country and are slowly followed by, uh, closely followed by the sports, uh, the state of sports within the same country. This is also a similar case to when engaging uh, peers and experts from outside of Africa. Whenever I say that I'm from Kenya, usually most of the people uh, are always asking why, we, why Kenya has the best runners in the world. Of course, that just tells you that uh, in terms of perception, then the top of mind that most people have about countries is either politics or the sports power race of that country. Uh, my earliest, sports memory actually is the 1994 uh, FIFA World Cup actually was won by Brazil. And I remember asking my dad and brothers uh, who they're cheering on and they said, we are cheering Brazil. And that was closely followed by, because they look like us. I had never really had to reflect on this memory 
until I started traveling out of my own country and then subsequently traveling out of Africa. I honestly still struggle to find a definition of what it means to be Kenyan and let alone being African, because in my travels, I found out that I'm not only Kenyan, but I'm also classified as African, meaning that what I do will be perceived as what it is to be Africans. However, I have greatly enjoyed um, learning and uh, about all the different diverse cultures across Africa. And it has really enlightened me to better understand how Professional, professionalizing African sports can positively influence the African brand. One of my favorite books is uh, Sociology of Sports. It's written by Tim Dillany. And in his book, he provides an indicative reference of the role that sports can play in a society. He says, and I quote, functionalism views society as a system of integrated moving parts that seek equilibrium. And he says sports can bring this equilibrium. He further goes on to state that to ignore sport is to ignore a significant aspect of any society and its culture. Why? Because sports is the opiate of the masses due to the fact that we are in the age of the sports consumer, which is dissimilar to the age of the sports spectator. Meaning that the trends that we have going on in sports directly influence our socioeconomic existence. The African story is not complete with the strides that its sports will make in the next few decades, and the journey that the African, um, the journey that we get to get there, actually, just like the African saying that it takes a village to raise a child, it will require a lot of joint efforts across the sports spectrum. It is my belief. Uh, in opening that there is an urgent need for policy makers to better understand what and how significant their role is in strengthening the African sports, which directly will reflect on how African nations are perceived as a brand. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for sharing that insight. That's well appreciated. I, I just want to take your point around people asking you, why do we have uh, good runners in, in Africa? I think that's also about that perception that yes, what have they come to recognize Kenya to, to, to offer? Uh, I also like the idea that yes, Africans needs to recognize that there is like an high on us. They want to truly check what we are doing. and. Sport is one of those ways that we can sort of change that, that narrative. Thank you so much for your, for your comment. Uh, it's also a pleasure to welcome another uh, speaker from Kenya, uh, Shiba Unyarunga. Yes, uh, would you please uh, share your own insight with us around this topic, uh, what you think, perhaps from your own experience and from your own activities? Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. My name is Shiba Unyarunga. I'm the CEO of Alive and Kicking Kenya. Um, the conversation is definitely very interesting for us when we think about the African brand, we really think about what we're making. A huge part of this discussion is usually just about the talent that we export, the athletes that we have. But for us, we think about what is being produced within the continent and what is actually going out from here. So for instance, for 11 Kick in Kenya, we make hand-stitched balls. Um, the balls are made to suit our terrain. By our terrain, I mean the rough grounds that we have, but we also export these balls out of the country to these European countries that use them as um, gift balls because they're so unique. And so when we think of that, we think about, do we consider the shoes that are produced within the continent and what that means for us? We think about the balls that are made within the continent so that sports is not just about the talent that is, pro is coming from the African continent, but also products that we're shipping out and how that in itself is creating a brand for Africa as a continent that is able to produce and export sports equipment and sports products. Thank, th thank you for, for that specific examples, because I think often when you think about uh, jerseys for African teams, you think about the Nike, the Adidas, and the Puma. But I guess now you are sort of reversing to see what are we really producing in Africa. Uh, uh, please, if you can mute yourself, if you are not speaking. Uh, yeah, so just try to also recognize the fact that 
the perception even about what we are producing beyond the talent, beyond the, the human resources. The, 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 I guess the example of the football is also something interesting, something very engaging. Yes, so please allow me also invite uh, Yomi Omogbeja for his own insight on this matter. Yomi, please. All right. Um, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Magaji, for organizing the roundtable and for inviting me as well. Um, this is a topic that I'm quite passionate about because I think Africa is the only continent that is not really taking sports seriously as a major, as the easiest way to project power. Um, every other continent, most other nations are using sports as a tool for soft power, whether in organizing mega sport events or pushing for their citizens who have positions in the top decision-making bodies of you know, major world sport um, organizations. Only Africa is not really pushing this deliberately like as a, you know, like as a project. And if you look at the past 20 years, as a Nigerian, for instance, if you go to most countries, and you say you're from Nigeria. The first thing that will come to mind, people you meet will be, oh, do you know Jeje Okocha? Do you know um, Rashidi Yakin? Do you know Umako Kainu? Now, this stems from 1994, 1996 uh, Olympic gold medalist in the football. And that is still what most people attribute to Nigeria. And when you, when as a nation you want to change a lot of of course, we know that most African countries have reputation from stereotype from Western media. And that's probably, probably what most people know about Africa, people that have never been to Africa. The only way we can actually change this is to deliberate about our sport policy. And sports and our sportsmen are the way to rebrand the country in terms of changing our stories and changing the narrative and telling our stories. So what are we doing to tell more of these stories? The positive stories of our sport people, how much of that are we pushing out to saturate the old negative stories of Africa that are out there? So for this, for us, when I studied Athletics Africa, for instance, it was simply because there were a lot of bad stories about Africa, especially in Nigeria online, as at that time, We're talking about 2000, early days of the internet, so if they're not talking about crime, it's uh, immigration and all that. But then when you start, when we start at Clays Africa and start pushing all the athletes and their stories. Now these are a way to change the narrative one story at a time. And I think for, for African countries also, they need to tell the stories, not only of sports, but also of the countries themselves. When you go to major African events, for instance, Everything stops at the, what I call the triangle. So people come in to a country for a sport event and all the organizers put in place is you go from the airport to the hotel, from your hotel to the stadium, back to the airport and you're back in your country. We're not making strategic plans and it, it projects to have these people spend even two extra days in that country. So, stay in the country, to look around the country, to talk about the country. We're not doing that. They know we don't put in tours, we don't put in, um, we don't even sightsee in the countries, they don't do that. All they do is you come to the country, you do the event and you're gone. So this year was African Championship in Mauritius, for instance. You arrive in Mauritius and all you see after 10 days is the stadium, your hotel and you're back. So tourism should be a major part of our continent, but we're not even thinking about using sports to drive these tourists to Africa. And this is, I think, a lot of missed opportunities for us as a continent that we need to put in into our event organization, also in our country plan for sports and youth development as well. So most young people in Africa don't even see Africa as a viable place to live or to work because all they see are uh, the stories, the negative stories mostly, they see in, on the media. 
And African media is more at, at fault for that as well. Because both, what you see in most African agents are stories from agencies, Western agencies. We are in Africa. We are journalists in Africa. But we are now writing local stories in Africa and pushing it globally. We are taking global stories and flooding it to our people. If you go to most African countries, look at the back pages. How many stories are there from local sports activities compared to what is there from foreign sport activities? In Nigeria, for instance, a normal new, uh, sport newspaper, we have almost 80% Premier League, German League, Champions League stories. And maybe only 5% of stories of sports happening around. So people living in Lagos know more about what's happening in Manchester and Liverpool than what's happening in Lagos and Abuja. So, so that's what I think. And well, um, I'll rest my case for now, but I, I just think there's a lot of issues. That we need to ask ourselves a lot of questions. What are we doing as media in Africa to project our continent? Mm. Which our continent has not just a, you know, a place of room and room, but a place where people need to stay, not where they constantly need to run away from. Thank, thank you so much for, for sharing that. I, I, I've been trying to take some notes here, especially around the tourism being integrated with sporting events. I like the example you gave, whereby we host an event, we just bring them to stadium and they go. They've not even really seen the beautiful things around that country. And I think we are, we, we are losing a lot in terms of that, ex, of that exposure. Another point you also raised was the need for us to saturate uh, uh, the media space. Yes, I see that idea whereby the back page is full of 80% of foreign news. And again, there are a lot of things. Yes, there's a lot of things happening in Africa that we think we can we can showcase. I'm sure we come back to that. I uh, mean, very soon when we start having that one-to-one uh, uh, -one questions. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Manuela, uh, uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. I, I, get, I came in touch with you through your work you are doing with, South, with the female team in, in Cameroon. I think it was, it was quite an interesting uh, work. And I thought uh, perhaps having, having such an, an external view, we bring in a new perspective to it. So perhaps, please, in, in just a few minutes, share your thoughts with us about how you think uh, African brand can Africa as a brand, or how do we use sport to reposition the African brand? Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me here because uh, um, it's it, it's a very uh, nice panel and uh, hearing from everybody, it's it's very interesting. Um, first of all, because um, again, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm approaching a work on on uh, football in Cameroon, but also because uh, the question that has been raised are interesting because are relevant to whatever brand that we may. Um, look at, um, and in this particular case, Africa. So one of the question was, who cares? Um, and probably uh, one answer could be everyone that has a connection with Africa or everyone that is uh, interest um, in, in the continent. Um, uh, but also the other thing is that um, um, the difference about sport uh, and the power uh, about sport is that enables that initial interaction um, based on a common passion. Um, and so that, that's something that's quite unique. Um, and, uh, and it's something that um, to some extent brings people together. Now about um, branding Africa, probably the other thing is that sports allows um, to tell stories. And uh, there is clearly a desire um, or a direction um, to hear stories from different perspective. And when I say different perspective, from Western perspective, if you will. Um, and so uh, it's about um, everything that you said about visibility, about giving a meaning, uh, a story, um, and um, a, a way of, getting away from the same old stories that you guys uh, kind of like brought up right now um, in terms of stereotypes, uh, in terms of like um, uh, some perception of, of Africa. And um, 
uh, also to claim your own strength. And so the strength of sports uh -huh. in, uh, in Africa. Yeah. Ah. So that would be for me probably um, how to, um, you know, kind of like change the narrative. And in this perspective, in my case, through research. And so through looking at um, different countries and what they're doing in particular things, because the majority is about Western countries uh, and actually we can learn from uh, other continents on how they're approaching things. Thank, thank you so much for that. I think the key word is research. Perhaps we can see how other people are doing it and as how we can also uh, bring that on board, but also to really find a way to change that stereotype, to find a way to change what's, what people think about African brands. But I think the issue is there's a lot of people that are responsible for these stereotypes. Yes, there's a lot of stakeholders involved and for us to really see who to, who, who to engage with and how to, to really change that. But ultimately, perhaps from your own perspective, we recognize that yes, research is very important. Thank you so much for sharing that your thought. We'll still come back to you on that. Thank you. Now, allow me to also introduce uh, Brian. Uh, I'm sure uh, it's nice having you here again. Thank you so much for your time. And we recognize the work you've been doing uh, with football and also your efforts with regards to, to the media. Yes, I've seen your interview with, with the former snap coach. Yes, I think you are doing you are doing a great job there. Thank you so much. So please, in a few minutes, would you be able to just share your insight, pass from your experience, from your work, from what you've done on how we can reposition this African brand uh, through sports? Uh, thank you very much for, for this opportunity. I think this is a very important conversation. And um, maybe I'll start on uh, take us a bit back and uh, pose the question, do we really have an African brand? I think um, from what uh, Yomi has said, uh, that's uh, very important for us uh, to consider because for us to think about repositioning something, it has to have had a position somewhere. So what's, what's this African brand that we are trying to, uh, to, to position or reposition? And uh, for that, uh, for me, I have to go back into history and say, what, what's the African story when you're talking about storytelling? What's the African story, as Manuela said, because it's about storytelling. And um, from, my, from my work, or what, where I come from, what I'm trying to do, I have to look back and say the African story, as far as I can go, is one, there was a slave, uh, the slave trade. And then that was followed by colonialism. And then uh, we had independent, independent Africa. And that's where I see the first chance or the first uh, steps in, time, in terms of trying to establish an African brand. Yeah. And uh, we can borrow from the people like um, uh, Kwame Nkrumah, what he was trying to do with football to promote Africa and position Africa as an independent um entity trying to position itself within the uh the global um political space and uh these are very intentional and i think we have to borrow from that if we want to do something with um with sports you know that's why Kwame Nkrumah was really advocating for his Ghana team to go and play in different countries and trying to push the african uh narrative but where are we today? Where are we today in terms of the African brand? I think somewhere along the way, we lost it all. Yeah, we lost that uh, push that uh, the people who are coming up and trying to establish a, an African brand, especially when it comes to football. You will forgive me because I have a bias towards football uh, because that's the most popular sport on the continent and, uh, and globally. Um, but it's really important for us to consider what can we do with sports, especially now, where we are challenged uh, by the media space, which as Yomi has directly as, as uh, said, we are in a position where we are competing globally with very established brands like the EPL, the La Liga, and this kind of thing. So where is Africa and what does Africa want to do with sports? And uh, that's why I say 
what you're doing with Semri, for example, is very critical because they have taken attention away from the hype. Can we go back and really understand through research and innovation what we want to do with sports, as opposed to riding on the hype that sports is, and at this point where the only fame we have is the African athletes who are able to manage to get to the global stage and push the Africa brand there. Uh, so it's, um, it's, it's a very difficult situation for Africa because we are in a position, we are in a, at a point where we have to be globally relevant, but at the same time, we don't have an African relevancy. Yeah, in terms of have we built the sports ecosystem in Africa to be able to sell it globally? Yeah, so we are, we are in this competition that we will never win. We are trying to reposition an African brand, but for what, for what, um, for what purpose? Like what are Africa's priorities at the moment, you know? We can, we, we can go on social media because now we have social media and trying to push something through video, through pictures of Africa. But where are our needs? What do we really want to do for our people? Yeah, I, I read an article recently that was really questioning the issue of branding. You know, we can, we can talk about branding the continent, even if we don't have a brand, but where, where are our needs? And for me, when it comes to, in this conversation, just to, to, to wrap up my thoughts, which are a bit scattered everywhere, is to think about Africa's priorities. And at the moment, what we don't have is the human capacity, the human capital on the continent. So how do we use pots to do that? It's not just up going to the global stage and saying, ah, oh, we are African, we have African talent, we have African part, but what are Africa's priorities at the moment? And for me, I see a lot of that in human development. And that's where sports can really come in to help us develop the human capacity to be able to position us globally as Africans. And at the same time, try to develop our institutions so that they're globally recognized. You know, when something happens in Europe, they brand it immediately global or world or international. But what in Africa, do we ever think about developing our institutions, our brands, so that they are relevant globally? So I will leave my, my thoughts there just to say, this is where I come from and uh, as the Football Foundation for Africa, which is what I'm championing for, it's about creating opportunities within sports, especially for young people, because I say we, we are not going anywhere without empowering the youth on the continent. And we cannot afford to go and compete at the global level, at the global perspective, trying to be there with the EPL, while at the base here, the foundation, we don't have anything to build on. Wow, so thank, thank you so much. Yes. What do we want to do in sports? Thank you. Oh, thank you, Brian. You've been very critical. And I guess that is all essence of this type of conversation. There is no need for us to gloss over it. We need to recognize we've got some really big challenge. And I think I've taken down some few, few points there, which should also be, be interesting for those who are watching, because I think that global relevance versus the African relevance, that's something we need to, to recognize. If we have been invited to the global team, what do we bring? What are those things that we can really, really showcase? Yeah, but from an African perspective, I still have that good memories of, of the World Cup in South Africa. Like I still remember the Vuvuzela, that was something that people remember. And I think that's uh, perhaps that's just me. Like I'm just thinking those are ways that we could showcase to the world what we are doing. Perhaps an African country holding the, the, the Olympics but the point is what our power it is. I think that is where this question really ends up. What our power it is. What do we really want to achieve? And uh, now can we, can we achieve that? So uh, Brian, if I might just stay with you to ask you some questions that I've prepared. Uh, so what, how would you really describe the challenge of sports in Africa? So if you were just to describe a challenge, is it about human resources? How would you summarize that challenge of sports in Africa? 
Um, I think to summarize the challenge we have in, uh, in sports uh, at the moment, uh, for me, my view is that sports is one of the ecosystem that still remains uh, colonized, for lack of a better word. That's the biggest challenge we have with sports in Africa, because we are too dependent on international or global institutions that we have not developed the capacity to be able to dictate what you want to do with sports. I go for football, every other sports actually, for it's not just football. But if you look at our national associations, uh, football association, basketball association, they're all almost entirely dependent on the international federations. Could be FIBA, could be FIFA. Without these global institutions, African sports cannot move. You understand? That's the biggest challenge we have in sports now. And it determines, even when you're thinking about repositioning ourselves, are we able to get to a point where we can talk about Africa and African institutions determining what they want to do with sports, what they want mm. to do with football? At the moment, we can't mm. because we are, econom so, so we are economically you... dependent to the international federations. Mm. So I, I guess our federations, I don't know, but again, this is why we're having this conversation. Are you, would you be able to also say that our federations can't stand alone without maybe financial support from the global, from the international federations? Yes, they can't because the business model in sports mm. is dictated from the Western world. Mm. Now, they... oh, yes, thank you. I just quickly want to bring this. How about for the brand, for the for let's say global brand? How do you think they now see us if we can't sort of survive without the 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 international brand? So I'm thinking of let's say the the CAF, the 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 African Champions League, something like that. How do you think brands want to come on board when they feel that we are not just strong enough? What do you think of the role of brands in this conversation? Brands, I mean companies that should sponsor this event. Um, if you look at football, for example, some of the biggest brands that are involved in football globally uh, who have been able to ride on the football uh, popularity, we have organizations like uh, Coca-Cola, FIFA, Heineken, yeah, that have been able to find relevance in the African content by riding on football popularity. But how many football brands, or how many, sorry, how many African brands outside of football have done the same in terms of expanding their brands? I'm looking at organizations in Kenya, for example, that are trying to expand um, regionally towards the continent. Have they, be able to, have they been able to ride on the popularity and passion we have in sports to grow themselves? Because it's about business at the end of the day. And that's why I'm saying the business model or rather what we have now is almost entirely dictated by the global institutions, the international institutions. So what can Africa do? How can African organizations find relevance in pushing for the development of sports? How many African organizations can invest in sports as a way of growing their own business? And uh, it's, it's good to have uh, people like uh, Yvonne uh, Namai on the on the on the panel today from CAF, and yeah. <laughs> for us it's a challenge. For example, is CAF, for example, able to champion something that is of relevancy to Africa? What is Africa? Mm. What is Africa working towards at the moment? Unity, integration. That's what we are working. That's what we want as Africa. But are we using sports to promote this? Are we using football to promote this? Mm. I think yes. that's that's the critical question. Thank you. I think we we will leave that. I'm sure she got the question, so she will try and answer it in her in her own time. But my last question to you, Brian: How do you then think we can get uh, people to show more interest in sport, perhaps sport outside football? Um, for me, it's about looking at. Uh, I've already said this. It's it's about looking at how do we want to use sports. And for me, it's, it's a platform for human development. Sports is a platform for human development. 
And that's what we need to sell as Africa because that's what we need at the moment. In sport itself, we don't have the human capital to even manage sports because everything that is sports has been managed internationally for a very long time. If you go into a federation, our ministries of sports, you don't find people who are qualified to manage sports professionally. So how do we change that? I think that's where our priority is, and I've said at the onset, that's, what, that's where we need to go. It's not about having um, an African Cup of Nations that, uh, okay, had so many views on, uh, on TikTok, on Twitter, and this kind of thing. We are not there. We are not there. Hmm. We are not there. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much for really uh, being critical, but I think it's very important for us to, to really talk about it. It's been a pleasure uh, having you around. Uh, please, again, if you have any questions for our panelists, try and bring them there because we are still coming back to, 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 to them to ask those questions. But if you have any questions, please put it in the chat. Somebody else can also pick it and talk about it. Thank you so much, Brian. It's a pleasure if having I, you. Thank you. If I can just, uh, before, before, before I leave, and uh, I have to excuse and, uh, because I had made time for this, but I have another uh, commitment that I need to run to because I see a very important question um, mm. on the chat by Dogo Diambo in terms of, is there a European brand? Mm. And, or is there a Spanish, Belgian, German brand? Why are we trying to build an African brand? Mm. And to answer this question, um, I would say probably we don't have the, the, the complete answer at the moment. But when you look at Africa, we talk about diversity of a culture. Can we think of regionalism as a way of promoting different brands that you can export globally? As opposed to rising on this thing at uh, TIA, this is Africa, this is Africa. Africa is huge. So what can we figure out within the huge space that Africa is without being divisive, mm -hmm. work together to promote different versions of the African brand. You know, when I try to, to talk about football coming from Kenya or East Africa, my Nigerian brothers look at me like, what I, what, you, you can't talk about football. Football is in West Africa. Football is there. So how do we change this perspective internally before we go to the global stage? Within wow. us, what are we doing in sports? Mm. Thank, yeah. thank, thank, thank you, you for that. Like, yes, I guess that's something to always reflect on. Again, everybody's seeing this, and we can always ask ourselves that question Do we have an African brand? Thank you so much, Brian. It's a pleasure having you. Thank you. Thank now, you very much. Go. I'm sorry I have to leave. I, I, will, I would have loved to be part of the whole conversation, but uh, I'm sure this will be very fruitful. Thank you very much. This is very important for Africa. That's all right. You can watch the recording when we are done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Manuela, perhaps from a research perspective, how would you describe your own uh, understanding of research on sport in Africa? Perhaps maybe from your literature review, from what you've seen, how would you describe the quality and quantity, if I may put it that way? Dr. Manuela. <laughs> Well, first of all, like, uh, I would like to, to add that I came across this project because of uh, students from Cameroon asked me to look at, um, hmm. because she, going back to who cares about the brand, who cares about Africa, it was um, a student from Cameroon, former football uh, player, um, uh, and she was interested, of course, in, in, in seeing how it, it was, um, uh, brand branding was uh, um, you know uh, um, used in 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 cameroon and when we started to do the literature review when we started to set the project the first uh, difficulty that we kind of had was to find enough papers regarding um african context specific like Cameroon context. So to answer your questions, probably there isn't still enough literature that can help whoever is approaching these, um, um, uh, these studies can help guide them through a different perspective, a perspective that is more close to the field 
more close to practitioners. So when we see many research papers from Western countries, okay, but we don't see many from, from Africa and from the specific then uh, countries in Africa. Country. Thank, you. Again, thank you so much for sharing that. Perhaps that also aligns with the coverage of the media that I think Yomi also highlighted about uh, the coverage in terms of maybe the media and also in terms of, in terms of research. But how, why do you think this is important? If I may ask you, how do you think research can contribute to the African brand positioning? Well, first of all, giving that visibility, okay? Mm. So letting people know what's really going on because most of the time we might have just perception from the outside. And this is, can happen from everybody that is not native from a country, right? We have, we are tied to the stereotype, to the, to the perception. So you want to correct those things by, you know, making sure that people can read about uh, sport in Africa um, and then specific countries. Um, because for example, when we looked at some, some stuff in, uh, in sport, Nigeria came up more for some extent. Um, and, and yet uh, we were not having, we were not able to have a clear pictures of all um, the distinction between what you also said, the distinction between Africa brand and the specific countries. So that was something that uh, was really like um, um, interesting to find out. So I believe that um, publishing more, um, it can help counterbalance with the Western perspective that is heavily, I, I've seen also many scholars, like even like, like me, Western scholars writing about uh, Africa. And I do believe that it's, that's why also I ask you to join me in the project because I, I believe that we need to have people that have knowledge of the culture, of the context, that know those nuances that otherwise outsider may take it for granted and we're not able to portray realistically the country with the, with the weakness, but also with the strengths, especially with the strengths. Thank you so much. I think it's also about having the right people who understand the context to join to join the conversation. Thank you. Uh, my last question to you on this part is: What are those areas of sports that you keep, you think research will be much more needed? Uh, so, first of all, in terms of uh, governance, so trying to understand how things are run there, and so everything that is related to um, organizations, um, governance, human resource management, uh, talent development management. So understanding how things are run by protectionists in Africa and in the specific countries, because when you know, then you can understand what are the specific issues that we can see in those contexts. Um, that maybe some that are not, that some that are relevant in Western countries, are not really relevant in uh, in mm. Africa or in, in other countries in Africa. So um, I would say that uh, uh, management for sure of, of organization, also for what Brian said, um, just to kind of like understanding what is, for example, the, the, the challenge or the intention to promote the, 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 the brand from, from the organization to make it on their own without having support from, uh, uh, global uh, organization. And then um, going uh, into the, uh, in my case, specifically into women's sport and yep. see what's happening there. Because there is, um, again, if you think about sport, there is sport and it's mainly masculine mm. uh, perspective. So it would be very interesting to have the, 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 the female perspective of athletes um, and also being able to share their stories because from what I was able to gain from the Cameroon project, there are very important stories that have appeal 
to that can have a, appeal to everybody and can help building a brand, a brand that can maybe tied into resilience. I've seen these women from their from their uh, stories. What what came to me as a team is definitely a resilience that is not common to see um, in other uh, places. Mm. Thank you so much for really for really sharing that. Uh, I also want to sort of take away from your point around the masculinity and the footballism, if I may put it yeah. that way. The focus yeah. has always been on football and the men's sport. Perhaps future research needs to start thinking about maybe female swimmers or female, even not athletics, but other sports How about female judo or female wrestling, some sport that is not really in the mainstream. So thank you so much for, for sharing that with us. Uh, now let me ask Dr. Uh, yes, Dr. Mogbeja. That sounds so interesting. Uh, Mr. Yomi Mogbeja. Yes, I've got some questions that we want to talk about. My first question to you is, what's the role of media in shaping this African brand? So now I think we are still in that contemplation of do we have an African brand? Is this something who cares? But perhaps from your own experience, what do you think is the role of the media in shaping this brand? Okay, yeah, thanks for that question. So when you say Africa brand, to us, basically, does it matter if it's West African brand, North African brand, Nigeria brand, Ghana brand? To most people globally, you are African. So mm. they don't really even know the difference between Tanzania and Uganda or Nigeria and Benin. Or Ghana. So we need to focus on Africa as a collective. Our people, our culture goes uh, cuts across different countries. So let's fo forget about these geographical boundaries that have been inflicted on us and focus on our people and promoting our people. I think we need to focus on more media coverage of our athletes' backstories. So for a young kid who grew up in, in a rural community in Nigeria or a rural community in Zimbabwe, or a rural community in Kenya, the stories sometimes are almost similar. How they get into sports, even when they finally make it to the top, you find that when you interview some of these top athletes, uh, I've interviewed a lot of top athletes from Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, Nigeria. When they tell you the stories, it's almost similar. So we have common issues, right? And I think to use sports as a way to promote our culture, our identity, and also to make it a viable uh, alternative for young people, you know, in conflict areas. Like Brian said, sports is a variable tool for human development and youth development. And I think music industry and the movie industry in Africa are beginning to get it. Sports seems to be the only one left behind now. And we need to do more work. And this work goes mainly to the sports media. So we need to first of all, talk to the media owners uh, and these proprietors of newspapers and TV stations and all that to spend more money on sports. Sports is often the <laughs> left behind in the newsroom. They oh. normally often the one with the lowest budgets. So mm. priority is given to politics and business and sports. So sport journalists at the end of the day are the messes of national sport federations and international sport federations to even go out of the to cover events. Now, what do you expect when these uh, these journalists are actually going out with international bodies or national bodies? So you can have you can have the independent media, independent output that you get. So first, the media owners need to at least improve this revenue to the sport department. And we need to focus more on media coverage of our athletes backstories, and then look at the way to improve the training of our journalists as well. So yeah. for instance, not everybody can be a science journalist, right? Uh, climate journalist. You have a certain level of expertise and knowledge. But because everybody does sport, everybody watch sport on TV, everybody thinks they can be a sport journalist. And so we have a lot of people that are not well-trained just jumping into here. So that's what I'm also saying that, do we have a 
philosophy of saying we are African. I'm a journalist from Africa. I have a duty, professional responsibility to sell the story, tell the stories of this continent. Or am I just there thinking I want stories that trend? And then you just go to Reuters, AP, you take a story and just give it straight. Most of these are just reproduced verbatim to African audience. We don't focus on the context. We don't actually explain it to our people. This is just, so most people in Africa consume this um, content without, uh, what would I say, With, without any media input, right? So we are not telling our stories, but we are pouring down stories of all the people to our people. And, and I yes. think that's the sad part of it for me. Mm. And that's Thank a crucial you. role of the media that I think we're neglecting. Yes, you've really, you've answered some of my questions, but again, let me acknowledge some comment from, uh, uh, Mr. Lumi, they yes, Betwell, uh, Kola, and I think I saw one earlier on, which is from, uh, uh, let me check, Philip, yes, he has read some comments. Thank you, Philip, I've acknowledged that we come back to those questions. But my last question to you, Mr. Yomi, is how do you really explain to, to, to people who prefer to consume EP Health versus our Nigerian Football League, for example? Is it their fault? Because so, even when I, you still people know more of the of the players of Man U, and they don't know the players of Sunshine. Sunshine is it Sunshine? Sunshine, Sunshine State. There's this Sunshine Stars, right? Sunshine Stars. Yes. Again, what do you say to that? Is it their fault, or it's just all about media again? Well, like I said, it's all about um, about packaging, right? So um, nobody wants to spend their time and their hard-earned dollars on something that doesn't have value to them. So what are we doing as sports practitioners or people in this ecosystem to put to increase the value and brand equity of our sports? Mm. And what are we offering? So if you go to, if DSTV, for instance, give you this HD quality match between Man U and Liverpool, and at the same time, you're having on the local TV station, it might produce in SD with no commentary or, you know, mm. nowhere produced on KTN with uh, Goma here versus another Nairobi champions or something. W which of them will you watch, right? So, so we need to focus on packaging our leagues as for professionally and making sure there's a value for our people that is attractive enough so that people want to watch them. And that means that we also need to, first of all, have proper governance structures into our national sport body. A lot of people in the sports, whether in the football, athletics, or in Africa, and are not qualified to even be there. So until you start having people who are passionate and driven to promote this sport in those positions, we're going nowhere. There are a lot of people who are past their say by date. They are still there, hogging positions that should be going to young people now. They refuse to leave. So how can you have progress when you don't have progressive people in position of authority? When you don't have progressive people even allowed near the decision-making process? So, my master's thesis was on sport governance in the Nigerian Olympic Committee. It was so bad that it's even hard to, to think how, how, you know, you're like, how did you have this little sources? I mean, how on earth did you even have medals in the Olympics? How did you even have this thing qualifying for AFCON? Because some high schools in the UK are better run than these organizations. So how, how did you, you know, you just wonder that how did we get any mm. amount of sources at all? Look at Toby set a world record and is a world champion now. But if you ask Toby, what professional input does the association have in a success story? You'll be shocked at what you hear, right? Yes, so yes. against all odds, these athletes are producing results 
So you can imagine mm. how much we will get if you have a better organized structure. Yes. Hmm. Thank, thank, thank you for sharing that again. So we can't really blame people who are watching this well-packaged content compared to what we are really produced. Perhaps that's also a challenge for, for, for us around to see, to, 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 be, to, to recognize that value is what people are looking for. So if you give them something valuable, they will truly enjoy it. Thank you so much, uh, Yemi, your, your, that's much appreciated. Uh, so if I can go to Sheba, thank you so much for your patience. I know it's, 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 it's very uh, sort of time consuming waiting for your own time, but thank you so much for, for waiting. I've got some questions and I see what you are doing with Alive and Kicking in Kenya. And my question to you, Sheba, is around the roles of charity in shaping this African brand. What do you think, or how do you think charities like yours are contributing towards this African brand? I think even as we have this discussion, what has come to mind a lot is maybe we just don't have a purpose because mm. as we're talking about this African brand, the question is once we have this brand, what is the purpose of having this brand? Are we just creating a brand so that we're known for a particular mm. thing? Or are we creating a brand so that that brand can generate something for the continent or for the people that are within the sports? because we all know there are so many gaps when it comes to sports. So we have the talent, but we don't have any development that goes around that talent. And even when that talent wins, we don't have a lot of effort that goes into helping that income to grow into something more. So as Alive and Kicking, we're a social enterprise. As I mentioned, we make hand-stitched balls. The reason why we do hand-stitched balls is for creation of employment. So 90% of our employment is actually just youth, women and persons with disability. And that's why we keep pushing for sports as an avenue for income and social development. And when it comes to the social aspect, in Kenya, a lot of the organizations and schools will talk about receiving balls from us. So what we do to all the schools that are not able to access proper playing balls, we're able to donate balls to them. And we also have programs on training, training youth, women and persons with disability, how to make balls, from football to rugby so that they can be able to generate income from those activities. And that's why my consistent question is, as we're looking at this African brand, and a lot of people are talking about the Vuvuzela, it's like, what was the point of the Vuvuzela becoming such an important thing? And now that it's become such an important thing, what has it done for us? And when we look back at that, we would say, yes, we were known for this thing, but no child in South Africa can say that my fees was paid for because of this knowledge that was developed around this thing. So in looking at the African brand, we have to think about what is the purpose of this African brand. And I would also say, in my personal belief, I don't think there can be consistency. I don't think that the African brand in Senegal is going to be the same as the African brand in Kenya just because our cultures, our environments are a bit different. So yes, we might have the same origin story of where people come from in entering into sports as an avenue for change, but how we look at sports is different. How Kenyans take sports and how a Tanzanian will take sports will be ideally very different. And when we look at how we can reposition ourselves, we have to be able to appreciate the differences in how we perceive sports and understand once we understand what this brand is, what do we have to achieve from that brand? You're muted. Thank you. Yes, I was just saying that since we've got this, the fact that we've got the same origin doesn't really give us the same template for us to really position our brand. And that's something very important to, to recognize. But Perhaps if you can share from your own experience, your struggles and, and perhaps some of your success stories as a charity organization, what has been the challenge? Uh, because you are not, you are a social enterprise and you are not really a brand that is really out there sponsoring and looking for money and, uh, and giving people money to sponsor an event. What do you think has been the challenge for a social enterprise like yours in, in, in supporting this African brand? Okay, I think the biggest issue is what everyone is mentioning, which is perception. There's a perception of what is considered to be maybe quality, and we look at that as imports. So when it comes to the, 
the African league or the African teams, or even the African um, viewer, they always see the leagues that are European leagues. They always see the, you know, you see Adidas sponsoring the games. You see certain brands sponsoring these games. And ideally what has happened is, as Brian was mentioning, because you have an ecosystem that is generated or created by Western entities, then the institutions that are developing are also Western institutions. So you don't get a lot of emphasis. And I would say we're not the only African brand that is producing sports equipment or sports items, but because you have an ecosystem that is dictating which sports equipment should actually be used for certain leagues, then that in itself has become a hindrance for organizations like us to be able to grow. So if we were to present a ball to even the Kenyan team, they would say that FIFA has an approved ball that we should be using. If you go to a rugby team, they will tell you that there is an approved ball that we are supposed to be using. So that limits your growth. And because they rely on these entities for them to grow, then they are not able to also support the local organizations that are producing local equipments. Mm. Thank you. Again, I quickly, I think this aligns with, I think it's Brian that was saying it about the reliance on the International Federation. And that's yeah. a very good example here. Why can't they use your book? Because they feel, yes, it's not the right size, it's not the right uh, hair pressure, it's not the right color. But again, it's about taking ownership of what we have in Africa and perhaps what we can do about it. So my last question to you, Shiba, is this. In what other direction are you envisaging, perhaps beyond sport, what beyond football? What, are, what other areas do you think you, can, you are exploring? Because I think the attention has always been on sport, but perhaps from your own work experience and your own day-to-day uh, -day activities, what other direction are you thinking about? I would say there's no other direction to think about. Ideally, when it comes to our continent, the most mm. played activity is sport. For us, sport is the thing you do on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't need a field. You don't need any fancy equipment. When you move around every single area in this continent, you find kids just playing. And you find people who have extremely huge talent, which is neglected. So for us, we're going to be persistent. We're going to keep on this journey and we're going to grow our brand because we know this continent is thriving in sports. Wow, thank you so much. And we really wish you all the best, like, yes, with, your, with, with what you do, especially being uh, the, the impact you're having on, on people around there. Thank you so much for sharing that, that insight. So now uh, let me go back to Yvonne. Like, yes, I think Brian has got some questions for you. Would you want to answer Brian's question or you want to answer my questions? Yvonne. <laughs> um, I'm going to answer mine is all... easier, mine is easier. <laughs> I'm, I'm available to answer all questions however I have to give a disclaimer that I am not speaking on behalf of the organization yes. I work for so <laughs> all um, all feedback is going to be from me as, uh, as a sports uh, strategist and marketer who's worked within different countries in Africa that's thank the only disclaimer I have. Otherwise, I'm open to answer all questions. <laughs> okay, then. Thank you so much for, for that disclaimer. Yeah, so what do you think uh, uh, What do you think about the growing need for Africa to rewrite their own history, perhaps from a federation or from your work experience? Do you think there is that need? Because Brian has given some histories. Do you think we should rewrite or we should just carry on from where we are now? Um, I think uh, I'm having listened to um, to everyone contribute before. Um, I wrote down I wrote down global relevance. I wrote down African relevance, and my immediate um, underlying statement was relevance is very subjective. So the mm. biggest, uh, for me, in my opinion, the biggest problem that we have is that Africans are not consuming. Um, African sport. Um, we, all of us have a sense of pride in talking more about what other people are doing or how we could be rather than promote what we have. Uh, like, for example, um, I grew up in an area whose local sports is bullfighting. So in my conversations, I realized how important it is for me to talk more about bullfighting than all these experiences that I have had 
um, uh, seeing uh, much more professional countries um, apply their trade in sport. So I think um, making reference to Brian's comment that um, uh, Africa is still colonized, uh, I would look at it from a different perspective, not necessarily the dependence on um, international, on uh, other global bodies, because that again is not unique only to Africa. I, I would like everyone to know that, that it's not unique to the African continent. We do have other countries um, across the world who are very dependent of, um, of their international organizations. So it could be a bit belittling. I think the colonization in our mindset as Africans is that we belittle ourselves uh, from the onset. We are not proud of who we are with our bad production, um, uh, my, my learned fellow mentioned uh, uh, production quality. He, he mentioned it as, um, um, as uh, something to compare on, on preference. However, how many of us on our way home, I grew up in the village, so I don't know about everyone, but most of Africa is rural. How many of us stop to kick the ball with the kids on the street? It's something that we do so naturally that it's part of us, but we never are really reminded that that's where we started, putting peppers together to form a ball so that we could kick it. So I believe that um, what it's, it's, not, it's not really rewriting. I believe it's an introduction of being African. Um, as as uh, Sheba mentioned, we are very diverse. I have seen this firsthand. You literally get from one country to another and it's like you're in a totally different continent. I live and work in Egypt mostly. And uh, I made a reference, I made, I made a comment on the chats uh, while doctor was speaking about uh, media coverage of African sports. On Egyptian television, you are not going to hear anything that is not Egyptian first. Even the way they report the English Premier League in this country is only specific to Mo Salah that you would think he is the only player in the English Premier League. They pick what is Egyptian and give it to the masses in Egypt. And the media is very regulated um, in, in the North African region. So whatever you consume and any, like for example, um, the highest ranked uh, African and Arab tennis player uh, owns uh, Jabwa from Tunisia. Half of the content on the tennis channel is about her, nobody else. You would think if you live in this country, you would think that those are the only athletes. You wouldn't care less for, for the Serena's and the Nadal's, not necessarily because they're not good, but because you do not identify with them. So I like the questions, I like the conversations that we are having, but I think also we need to move from the, from the situation where we are comparing ourselves to what we see and introducing ourselves for who we are. Yes, doctor, we have very bad production in some of our local leagues. What do we do about it? I have colleagues in journalism in my home country, but it was my own federation who squandered the money meant for a production unit. It wasn't our priority to them. So I like when people ask what are our priorities. And I like uh, the fact that um, my, my peers like Sheba have a clear path set out. So in my opening statement, I was very, um, I, I closed by saying that I do think it is urgent for the policy makers to first understand how each yeah. small decision affects the overall picture. So Thank I you. did a paper for the Chartered Institute of Marketing um, regarding um, African, um, African football and how we can be innovative, how we can adopt an um, entrepreneurial mindset. Entrepreneurial in the sense of innovativeness, being innovative. And I like that uh, some of the participants have mentioned um, sports tourism, which is something that I also uh, put in the paper. So apart from the concept of uh, having smart stadiums, we have to realize that as the continent with the youngest population, and which is going to be our reality also for the next uh, few decades, how do we speak 
to that teenager who would rather play video games every day than go out and throw a basketball or a rugby ball or play football? How do we connect to that person? So as conversations come from criticizing, because sometimes we are not in a power to effect the change. That is why we have conversations to try and influence the change. For me, when, we, when I am asked why the African brand matters to me is because I have a son who asks me, who, or rather who tells me and insists that he wants to play football when he grows up. All the Africans that we consider successful have had to go out of Africa to look successful. That is the success story that we sell ourselves. We sell the story that I have to be more Salah to make it in football. So the very people, dinner conversations around the table are, how do we all become more Salah? So we're not thinking about how does my child get to play football and play for my national team? How do I start by criticizing my own federation, my own sports governing bodies in my country so that my son can play uh, football, can play basketball, can, can play tennis? We can't always be waiting for other organizations to come and do things for us. But in the very sense that our day-to-day -day lives, we are faced with this, um, I like that Mahatma Gandhi said that if you want to change the world, then you go home and love your family. If every person within the sports ecosystem thought about giving an opportunity for their kid who is interested in sports, then you will find that we could hold accountable these leaders within our sports environments in such a way that these frameworks would be suitable for the growth of these professional sports uh, in Africa. Thank, thank you for sharing that. And allow me then follow up with this next question. We recognize your disclaimer, but what do you think confederations, governing, governing bodies, governing organizations, what do you think they can do? So this is just beyond CAF, but perhaps for different sports, what do you think is their responsibility as at, at least now to make sure that things goes on well? So we are thinking beyond sport, beyond CAF, but perhaps because of your role, maybe you can have an, a, that bigger view of what, how can our governing bodies and federations support this whole branding, like branding strategy? Um, I will make relevance to uh, one of the countries that I have, um, I have, I have learned is very much advanced um, in uh, their framework of sports management, uh, which is uh, South Africa. Um, the revolution of sports in South Africa is dated back to 1995 when they hosted the Rugby World Cup. It was their first international event after the apartheid era. They had been banned from hosting any sports activity. And in fact, this occasion is relevant when we're speaking about the African story because there's, uh, there's a lot we can borrow from that. So in 1995, when Nelson Mandela wore the jersey for the South African rugby team, which was a majority of, um, uh, which included a majority of white players, then the, the majority population of South Africa, which was black, um, recognized rugby as a sport. And one of the things that this government did during that time was to put a tax waiver on anybody who supports sports. And up to date, the policies in South Africa, it is enshrined in the, in the, in the country's policies um, on some of these benefits of supporting the local ecosystem. Uh, doctor mentioned uh, super sport. Uh, Multi-choice is one of the biggest um, uh, supporter of sports, especially in South Africa. It started in South Africa. When you get to experience super sport in South Africa, you will experience eight to 10 different channels that will only have South African sports content. This is country specific. They cover it in detail up to that Sunday 
um, touch rugby much that people will be taking uh, part in. It's not competitive, it's actually for fun. They tell so many stories and there's so much uh, docu-series just about the South African sports. Policy makers are the, the change that Africa needs across board. If we did not have a government supportive, if we did not have a government that had understood the power of sports in South Africa, we wouldn't have a country whose sports complement the entire player development pathway. Being in the national team of South Africa, not even national team, playing in the premier competition of South Africa, be it in football, in basketball, in cricket, that one player in the first team has five other people who can replace them if they are injured. Most of the people who take part in sports in South Africa if you have, you have you have a sports uh, uh, if you have sports talent your fi your family most of the time is usually um, on the radar of the sports organizations the moment your son or your daughter turns 5 years old they are started to be monitored you'll have coaches when you go watch games they will be telling you okay uh, could you add this to their diet it's become mm. so enshrined in conversation mm -hmm. that mm. when you go to sunday in church you're told okay uh, you played basketball during your time. So, and you have a, a, a young lady coming up, you know, maybe this is the time to start feeding them this balanced um, diet so that they can be competitive by the time they get to 16, 17. So you see how their junior teams perform. Annually, they have an annual celebration of, um, of youth sports. And it's, it's very elaborate. If we, can, um, if we can empower our policy makers to understand, we don't necessarily have to wait for bad things to happen because mm. South Africa's success uh, was triggered by the apartheid era and the, and the unity that came uh, with the country's president adapting a rather white, a rather colonial sport at that time. So I do think that it's just uh, information uh, on how we can do this better. Thank you so much, uh, Yvonne. I really appreciate that. Just one question, one answer. Can Do you know of any sport that originated from Africa? You mentioned bullfighting. Do you know any sport that we can say, oh, this is African sports? I think there are very many depending on the, on the country that you go to. Okay, I can't In my remember country. any. <laughs> That's what I'm just thinking. So perhaps if you are listening, if you are watching, if you can just put in the comment, if we can say, for example, you can say, okay, maybe football is from, let's say, uh, UK, let's say maybe, I don't know, basketball from America. Do you have any sport that we can say this is Africa, perhaps from a particular African country, please? Uh, that I think would be each, very yeah. each country has a, a traditional sport. That's what I'm 100% sure. Oh, of. traditional wrestling. Give us a yes. traditional wrestling Okay, yes, maybe we can go for that. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you so much for your patience. I'm sure you've enjoyed the conversation. Uh, it's, it's, thank you so much for waiting. Uh, you know, as I have got some questions here for you, and it's actually around the brand, the African brand. You started this conversation, and I'm bringing it back to you. Like, do we really have this African brand or are we just trying to compete with the international, the European brand? What's your own definition or explanation for African brand? Are we asking too much or it's something we should be talking about? Well, thank you. I, I'm, I'm so uh, glad to you know, have stuck around and listened to all these amazing uh, speakers and, and you know, you know, coming back coming down to this question, basically what you're asking, I think everyone has said something that talks about, you know, what Africa, the African brand is. But yes, I'll move away from it. It. I wanted you to finish it off. <laughs> yeah, moving away from, you know, just sports. What's, what, I, I asked a question, like, you know, who cares? What does, what does the African brand mean to the different stakeholders? Um, if we look at the, what the media shares about Africa, and you know, it, you, you come up with Africa is, is corrupt, 
Uh, Africa is fragmented. Africa is, um, you know, looked down upon. But there's also some change happening. Africa is young. Uh, Africa is digitally connected. It shocks a lot of people when I tell, you know, when I tell them that I, I, I don't spend cash. I don't use cash, but I don't use, you know, cards. I use mobile money. We, we we have that we you know that's something that's happening on the continent that there's a lot of transition going on and so despite what the world thinks you know despite what the world thinks about africa there is some growth there is some movement there is some i mean when we talk about the africa the africa uh, free trade uh, agreement that's been signed i, I just saw yesterday that there was a, a consignment of batteries that were made in Kenya that landed in Ghana. You know, that's something that says that, you know, there's this conversations happening. Coming back to sports and what that means for the African brand, it's a really huge thing because we have 54 countries. So it's, it's, very, it's very diverse, but I'll come to something Yvonne said very critically. How do you sell a brand that your own people haven't bought? How do, we, how do we convince the world that Africa is this great brand around sports if our own people are not buying the sports, the belief of sports? When I sit down, I do a lot of mentorship. When I sit down with these young guys and ask them, you know, where do you want to go? What do you want to be? And it's what Yvonne said, it's what, um, it's what Brian said. I want to be great in Europe. Nataka Kwenda Maju, as we call it in Swahili, you know, is I want to be great out there. And what, why I started Sports Connect Africa, as, I was a, as an amazing athlete, I, I believe I was pretty good. I ran 100 meters in 12 seconds. But I, 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 I want to be able to have that at home. I didn't want to go and run 100 meters 12 seconds in Europe. How about having my mother watch me at home? having my brothers watch me at home and my community watch me at home. I've seen Doc, um, Mr. Kola has said something very important here. We have to build the trust and the love and the brand around the community first before we can sell what Africa and African sports is to the rest of the world. Now, when it comes to spending, Africans might not have as much as the rest of the world. So how then do we convince a Kenyan, a Nigerian, a Ghanaian, a, a Rwandese, like Yvonne has said happens in North Africa and South Africa. How do we convince, you know, middle Africa to say, I'm going to spend my $2, not $10, not $50, but I'm going to spend $2, $5 consistently so that we start building, you know, some, some income, we start building an ecosystem. We start, there has to be some sort of investment, some money behind sports. Um, that for me is where we, we have the challenge. It, we can't sell Africa to the rest of the world if, Africa, if Africans don't believe that they are worth their own brand. So we need to start at home first. Thank you so much for, for that. Again, it's, it's also still coming back to that brand. So if you are selling something, that means we must have Yes, the oh, that guys, this is the African brand that we are selling you. This is the African brand that we want you that we want you to to buy to engage with. And I think that will also be important for the stakeholders to see where they fit into this. So uh, my question again is, how do you think we can bring in diaspora? Because I asked this question and on LinkedIn, we got this question from somebody from New Zealand. I was talking mm -hmm. about Africans, Africans in outside Africa. How do you think we can integrate the Africans in diaspora into mm -hmm. this discussion? Like without us trying to run in Europe, can we bring Europe? You know what I mean, right? Can we bring Yeah, I do, I do. Can... Yes, go on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so um that's an interesting one. I, I learned that Nigerian music grew because of the diaspora. Because anytime a Nigerian, yep, anytime a Nigerian went into a club, they'd go to the DJ and say, DJ, just one, this just this song, you know, they'd get into a club 
or they'd go and make a request in a, in a radio station in, in London and say, please play this by this guy, he's Nigerian. It's, it's what's rocking in my country, you guys will love it. And they insisted, and there's a lot of Nigerians out there. So you can imagine if 10 guys walk to the DJ and all of them are asking, just play for me this one, just play for me. And then the DJ is like, okay, you Nigerians are playing this song that you want. So, you know, it's up to us who are here, one, to leverage the networks that we have with those who are outside. If you have people asking questions, then that means that there's an interest. And so we must, you know, we must form these networks and we must encourage them to sell, um, to sell their, their, the, uh, the African. And when I say African here, it's, it's both the African brand, but the individual country brands um out there so as as a kenyan whenever i travel i can assure you if i'm in the airport i am wearing my kenyan jersey with nike uh, it's 10 years old she's she's we've kenyans got the armband you know we've got wherever we go i don't have my band I, I wherever i go i always leave it with someone but i've got my kenyan jersey and you know what happens at the airport i walk in mm -hmm. and they ask, ask questions me, Oh, they asked me, are you a runner? He <laughs> said, the last time I ran was 20 years ago, but yes, I am, I am a runner. Oh, do you know Kipchoge? Oh, do you know this guy? Because that's what we've built. And it's, you know, even in the streets, I, I, at some point I, I was in London and I wore the jacket and a random guy from South Africa reached out and said, I, I love your jacket. How can I, how can I know more? I mean, are you, are you from here? Do you live here or are you? I said, I'm from back home, but I know what this jacket does. So let's connect. Um, beyond that, there are groups, I think, uh, I believe that are, that are set up. Um, I, I, I'm speaking with a gentleman called Chris Miles he's in the US. So he's African-American uh, and um, they have, a, they have a, an organization, the Africa, I, I forget the full name, but it's a network between the Africa and the, uh, the American diaspora. And their focus currently is, um, you know, br bridging a gap, whether it's between um, education and sports. Uh, whether it's bringing the institutions together. So last week we had a meeting with, um, with the University of South Carolina, just how can we have integration, bring sports lawyers to Africa and bring, you know, have the exchange programs. So there's, there's definitely, it's up to us to create those spaces, like what you're doing now, you know, create these spaces where we can have these conversations. Yeah. I mean, outside, I mean, yeah. and say, Wherever I am, I'm going to do one thing, but Come how up, can yeah. I, how also can I be able to push back at home and add value at home? That's fine. Thank you so much. I quickly want to want to, to share with you about, uh, to, to really put you on the spot about the Jesse. I'm sure you've not seen the Nigerian Jesse. I yes, love it. Was, <laughs> it, it was so that I don't think I've even seen a Kenya Jesse. Does Kenya play football? Uh, no. Stop it. You see, that's Nigerian. <laughs> <laughs> are, they, are they speak with you pigeon now? No. <laughs> ah, Rafi. Ah, oh, Abali Rafiki, like chill, chill. chill. Now, don't worry, I'll, I'll get you a Kenyan runner's jersey. <laughs> no, but that be right. Then we can exchange. We can exchange again. That's also part of that. That's right. To see how yes. we can we create that kind of identity to the right price. Thank you for that mm. hand band. You see, I don't have any. I have a wristwatch, but again, it's coming. It's coming. I promise. You will have those, it. <laughs> those small, small things can be a conversation starter. It's like people yes. see it just different. It's different from what they've seen. And that mm -hmm. could be a time for you to really show forth what you've got. Thank you so much. Now let's just open the floor for about 10, 15 minutes to see if there's any questions, any comment from the audience, please. I've been seeing some comments here which I've been following, but I guess perhaps if there's somebody who wants to talk to us, Philip, it would be nice to just hear your voice. You've been very engaging with the comment. Uh, uh, Gabe Olumide, yes, I know him. If, you've been, if you want to just join this conversation, please let us know. And I can just, you, you can share your own comment and thoughts. But I just, I've seen some comment which I think has been very engaging. Yes. Uh, okay. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello, can you just tell, I'm feeling like a radio host now. Can you tell us your name and where you're speaking from? <laughs> yes, I'm Don Quantisem. Okay. I'm speaking from Ghana, Accra. Okay, that's fine. Yes, uh, I, I would like to know 
uh, you see, when it comes to sports, we have a lot of them. Hmm. So as if we want to build a brand, which area are we focusing on hmm. as, as Africans? You see, we have to get, we have to build a niche. So hmm. if it is football, if it is athletics, if it is swimming, if it is boxing, so let's know as Africans, which area, which specific area do we want to build uh, the niche on so that we, we also make impact in that field or in that area? So that, that, that is my question. Oh, if yes. the panelists can, Thank can you. help me out. <clears throat> yes, maybe, maybe Yvonne and, and, and can really uh, think about that. Yes, do you think we should just brand everything and we should be more focused? Yvonne, what do you think? Um, I think I think our diversity is our strength. Um, it would be interesting whenever we are in discussions such as this, when we speak about uh, an African brand, it would be interesting if every speaker was to introduce themselves by what is unique to their brand because anyone mm. who is watching who is not from Africa will also know, oh my God, yes, there are 54 countries in Africa. So when I go to Kenya, this is <laughs> what the Kenyans do. But um, in terms of uh, niche, I'll tell you something that I found very interesting. So I have been to 20, 29 countries in Africa. The, uh, the uh, culture, that we go and gather in um, in a in a cafe to watch uh, sports is the same everywhere. It's standard. <laughs> it is standard. So we do have something that is African in the culture of coming together in the enjoyment of sport. Hmm. I, I I made a comment while Cynthia was speaking because I thought this was very uh, it was very interesting. We had a media personality who rushed their social media and said, "I am in Cameroon and there's no KFC, there's no Uber. This is so backward." Hmm. Um, instead of learning what it means to Cameroonians to be Cameroonian, this is hmm. somebody who chose to compare. Down. Yes, hmm. yes. So in terms of niche, um, I think we can find uniqueness in all our occurrences. It does not have, uh, uh, Senegalese is still African. When you go out there out of Africa, you are African first before you are from your specific country. So I do believe uh, that this niche is the uniqueness of our own culture from where we come from. It is not mm. one thing. But let us start from that point of when we go for, um, when we have uh, local matches, we go to the stadium and because we are not allowed to drink, then we drink so much before that we watch all the matches when we are drunk. That is unique to you. It is what you do as, a, like for me as a Kenyan, that's what I do. So in sharing these experiences is how we change this narrative, one story at a time. That's we right. have wow. to own who we are, how we do things. Um, I think the first, uh, the first uh, World Cup I watched, um, it was in somebody's house because we did not have a TV. We have to own these stories that when we go back to our villages, we still have places where we call them standing cinemas. We still go and there's somewhere on a blackboard, it's written the matches that are going to be shown uh, on, the, uh, on that day. And you That's pay very little money. It's very affordable. You know, we need, mm. to, we need to have a sense of pride in that because it wow. is who we are. So mm. for me, that's my niche. It's uh, Cynthia, would you want to just add some, some few points to that as well? I think Yvonne, yes. What's your thoughts? Um, I'm, I'm just coming. I'm, I'm just going to, you know, agree with with uh, Yvonne, and I think I said this. We we sometimes, you know, because the way sport has been positioned to us at, you know, at the international level, it's about big money, it's about big this, it's about big that. It doesn't have to be about all those big things. It has to be about what works for us. And you know, as a marketer, um, you know, as a marketer, as a as a branding expert, you you you. A brand is a promise. I said that when I started. 
Yes. And yes. a brand is a promise to the needs, to fulfill the needs of your consumer. And in this case, whether it's the fan, it's the community, you know, that's the promise. And wow. we, don't, we don't have to sell the world to them. We just have to sell what works for us. I think that's, that's, that's what's key. Um, something came up earlier that I'm very passionate about. Brian said it, capacity and capability. We have to build the right people to do the right stuff. It's so critical for us. Uh, and we're working together with the Sports Connect Africa. We're working together with the Kenya Academy of Sports. We're setting up um, the first uh, sports career fair. I'm, I'm not sure I've heard of a sports career fair across the, the continent. Uh, so we're, we're setting up the first sports career fair uh, yeah. either in, in early December or January. We'll be able to communicate that. But the idea is to show cases, young guys, and to show Africa that, look, there are people who work in sports. You know, you could be, you could be a doctor. That doesn't mean you have to consistently just be, in you know, uh, yes, in, in hospitals, you could move to this you know, side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, 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 I mean, we have, which Africa churns out so many educated young people, marketers, uh, you name it. Hmm. So how do we influence these people to, wow. you know, come in and, and be part of our sports? Okay, thank you. Yvonne, before I come to you, Philip was meant to share. Philip, can you can you speak now or you are still having technical problem? If not, you can just put your com you can put your comment or question. We will all read it. Because I would have loved to hear your own point, but I think there are some technical issues there. So while we wait for Philip, Yvonne, would you just want to you raise your hand? Oh yes. Um uh, uh, Cynthia mentioned on uh, big money. I wanted to give an example. Um, within the Kenyan rugby ecosystem, we have a gentleman called Mchezo Wameno. Uh, Mchezo Wameno translated to um, teeth problems, uh, teeth games. This man has been selling groundnuts. I remembered because I, ha I have groundnuts next to me and I put one in my mouth. So when Cynthia was saying big money, I remembered that this man has been selling groundnuts in every rugby game for the past 20 years. Much day, he makes enough income, so much so that when rugby is uh, on the season in Kenya, he has been mm -hmm. able to educate his kids. Mm -hmm. From the For the years that I worked in Kenya Rugby Union and after, well, because I'm still a rugby fan, I still watch, he has been able to employ other people to sell the groundnuts and crisps during rugby games. So when you break down the economy of sports, it's not the big sign of fees. It's mm. small things like those that people own up to. And one of his kids, believe it or not, is now Zero. playing rugby. <laughs> From granite <Granot> money. <laughs> mm. Wow, thank, thank you for sharing that. Now I think uh, considering our time, we've got about 10 more minutes left. Uh, can I just maybe start with Cynthia to see if you have, so my, th this is just about a closing remark. Think about one stakeholder, what is that party message you might want to give? Just one sentence or two, like, yes, what would you want to say to somebody listening to you right now about repositioning African sports? So just something short in a parting closing summary. Short closing summary. We are Africa and Africa is our business. It's that's, that's too short. short. That's too short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. I, 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 think you, you got the big, but I, can you? Yes, that's true. Yes. Like, yes. Africa we are brand. Africa. Africa is our business. Hmm. Nobody's going to come from out of the world to make Africa what it needs to be. Whether it's in sports, in agriculture, in economics, in whatever. We are Africa, and Africa is our business. It is up to us to find those solutions that work for us first before mm -hmm. they work for anybody else. So that's what yes. I mean. We are Africa think, and Africa is our business. Yes, I like that. The solution that works for us, I think that's the that, that's a very closing remark that we might not have to follow the template of Europe. We have our own particular uh, situation context that will be, be very applicable. Thank you so much. And mm -hmm. now, Yvonne, what do you, what's your closing remark? 
Um, thank you so much uh, for having me. I think in the same breath, uh, just to insist that nobody is coming to serve us. Um, mm. Let us own. Let us own um, our story. Our stories. Let us reintroduce ourselves. Um, I know we were speaking about repositioning the African brand, but we are making this statement based on how others view us, yes. which um, unfortunately we cannot change because everyone is entitled to their own opinion. Uh, but we need to we need to reintroduce ourselves from a point of power that we are Africans. We have something that is unique to us. Just the same way currencies have different um, power across different countries, then our uniqueness should be our strength. Money in Egypt is still money in Kenya, is still money in Nigeria, is still money in Senegal. They don't look the same, but they serve the same purpose of enabling us get our basic needs. Mm. So in the very breath, our sports can champion our progressiveness in Africa. For every one player who is able to play on the field or for sports like swimming, for every one swimmer, even in individual sports like swimming, their existence impacts at least bare minimum 20 people. That mm. is the economics of scale that we need to think about. At mm. every stage of development of a player in any sport, they employ indirectly 20 different people in 20 different capacities so this is not a joke it is not showbiz the end product if we pay attention to it if we put in the work then we will have the africa that we want thank mm. you thank you so much i like the way you've been able to quantify at least that let us know with one it takes a village to raise a sportswoman. Like I think I can I can summarize like that. Thank you, Shiba. Would you please be able to provide us some closing remark? Yeah, um, I think the discussion has been lovely so far. We've talked about so many ideas and things that we can do to improve our brand where we are. I think it will take a lot of persistence. We say Rome was and built in a day and i think that's a reality we're starting this journey we're starting the discussion so it'll take time for us to figure mm. out what the purpose is figure out what we want to do in the different countries before we create that coll collective movement but it's something that we can do as long as we're having these discussions that will be an outcome in the end and i think that when it comes to sports as a tool in itself we have to think about it being more than just the game it's yeah. more than just going for a game. It's more than the talent. There are so many opportunities for economic growth. For instance, for 11 kicking, we're able to do about 40,000 balls in a year. And mm. within those 40 balls, those are quality balls that meet FIFA specs. And if we're this one organization that is able to create employment, how many other organizations? We're talking about the, you said Mchezo Wameno, who is able to, you know, create income by just selling something as simple as ground nuts during a game. So we have to start to rethink sports as just not the talent or the game itself, but all these other economic opportunities that are around that sport in itself. Mm. Thank you so much for that. I like the fact that we can start from each, like brighten everybody's corner that, okay, wherever you are, do something and later collectively we get to brighten the whole Africa. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Manuela, would you, oh, sorry, uh, Yomi Omogbeja, please, any closing remark, please. Okay, um, I would just like to continue with what most people have said, you know, like, um, we need to get serious about sports as a way of, you know, um, developing our continent. So I would like to kind of look at the organizing committee of events and also the, the national, um, and the Confederation Sports Bodies as well. So next year is the African Games in Ghana. So let's say I had to talk to the ANOCA or the local organizing committee on the ground. Don't allow this to just come and go like it's always been. You have an opportunity to showcase Ghana and Africa as a viable economic, uh, viable place for investment and economic development. So make sure that you also involve allied industry, music, 
entertainment. Let it be a whole festival. Let everybody that comes to Ghana spend every penny they bring in. Give them mm. opportunities. So they go from the sport field in the evening, make sure there's festival, there's theaters, there's movies. Get the Nollywood, Gollywood people to have movies, premiere every night. You know, create opportunities for people to experience the country and spend money. This is why we don't get money outside what government brings to the sport. Most of the people that we put in sport just think, okay, we're going to, we're hosting this competition. Government's giving us X amount of money. This is how we're going to share it. And that's it. That's the level of thinking. They're not thinking of compound you know, interest, they don't give you doubling this money, investing in other things, getting people or uh, other allied industry to actually benefit the society, the communities to benefit. No. So we need to start thinking beyond, oh, we're just playing football. Sports is business. And within that business, there are a lot of sub sectors that need to benefit that make a full ecosystem. And we should start focusing on that. Well, thank you so much. I hope I hope the Ghanaian local Ghanaian community is listening to you. <laughs> thank you so much for that. Dr. Manuela, yes, your closing remark, please. So first of all, uh, I would like to thank you, all of you, Emmanuel, Cynthia, Yvonne, Sheba, Yomi, and Brian, to allow me to be here and here because I've learned so much from, from you guys learning about this, uh, this conversation. Uh, what I take from it is probably what is relevant to every um, country uh, and about repositioning uh, and this direction of uh, owning who we are, uh, owning our own stories and mm. uh, having that uh, drive and that passion to kind of like make sure that also what is good that is being done has you know comes into these these stories and informs everybody. I, I can relate as a European, as a, someone that left uh, my own country, to those stories you know of willingness to shine a light on things that works and make it things better. So thank you so much for having me. Yes, it is a pleasure having you. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us again. Allow me to acknowledge the comment from Philip. I'm sure we can read it. Read it. I'm sure we also engage further with him to really discuss and and get his own opinion. Uh, we've recorded this, and we will be sharing the the YouTube link very soon, perhaps when we finish this. Uh, thank you so much for everybody that has contributed. This has been organized by SEMRI. SEMRI is a research organization that focuses on on issues affecting Africa and Africans. And uh, we recognize that perhaps if we can't organize sporting events, we can actually start this conversation, perhaps from a research perspective, have this conversation and we can we can start 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 this conversation. Hopefully things can change. It's been a pleasure spending this afternoon with you. I'm sorry, there's no entertainment, but I'm sure we can continue with the conversation with the jollof rice and the Ghana and the Nigerian jollof rice. I'm sure that is a conversation you don't want to start by this time of afternoon. Some people are in a wedding, they are enjoying the best jollof rice, and we are here having a conversation. Yes, Yvonne. <laughs> I brought up the jollof conversation because um, I know I, I know sometimes you don't look things at the bigger picture, but when you look yes. at the bigger picture, Nigeria is Africa's biggest economy. Um, yes there is this banter that usually happens on Twitter. Somebody tells so-and-so. So a country fights another country. So when you start a Jollof conversation, this is an opportunity to market Ghanaian culture prior to hosting the games. Mm. So sometimes in sports, you don't. it's not just about the sport, like Sheba said. These are conversations you can start, and this is organic marketing. It will have a life of its own. Mm. Yes, that's true. So, and I, th I think, I, I think you're me also mentioning that event in, in Ghana. I think perhaps let's see if if Ghana will really take take that on board and really use that to market themselves. But thank you so much. I hope to build further connection with you. I think I'm connected with you on LinkedIn. I will look forward to what you are doing. Perhaps if there's a way we can collaborate and we can partner together. Cynthia, I look forward to the career fair in Kenya. I think that's a very good one. Like. I think it's also aligned with what Yvonne is saying. For every one sport person, there are about 20 people 
that are connected. There is media. You need you need a media person to be following that sports woman to cover and tell that story. So even you need a physiotherapist, you need a nutritionist, you need a lot of people. So we look forward to that. Thank you so much for spending this afternoon with us. It's been a pleasure. And once again, my name is Emmanuel Mogaji. I look forward to speaking with you sometime soon. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Bye Thank for you. now. Oh, Philip, yes, I think I will try and catch your number, yes. I hope to be in touch with you very soon. Yes, I think you've got some insight that we were not able to, to, to talk. Thank you, Yvonne. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, Cynthia. Bye for now. Bye. What is bye in Swahili? I know Jambu. What's bye in Swahili? Kwaheri. 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 Thank you. Kwaheri. Bye. <laughs>